Hello everyone! In today's video lesson, we will be learning the Earth Science Module 2 focusing on minerals and rocks, specifically in the lesson 1, which is the composition and structure of minerals. So here's the thing. Are the minerals present in dietary supplements and the minerals we are talking about here is the same? Well, it's obviously no. From geologic perspective, a mineral must be naturally occurring crystalline solid. Minerals found in dietary supplements are human-made inorganic compounds that contain elements needed to sustain life. These dietary minerals typically contain elements that are metals such as calcium, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, and iron. Although these two types of minerals are different, they are still related. The sources of elements used to make dietary supplements are in fact the naturally occurring minerals on Earth's crust. It should also be noted that vitamins are organic compounds produced by living organisms, not inorganic compounds like minerals. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. Geologists define minerals as any present inorganic solids that possess an orderly crystalline structure and a well-defined chemical composition. So a mineral must exhibit the following characteristics. First, should be naturally occurring substance. A solid, inorganic substances, orderly crystalline structure, and a chemical composition. So let us discuss this one by one. Naturally occurring minerals form through natural processes, including volcanic eruptions, precipitation of a solid out of a liquid, and weathering of pre-existing minerals. Synthetic diamonds and rubies and other substances with a specific chemical composition and structure produced by chemists, engineers, and manufacturers are not considered true minerals. Solid a true mineral must be solid at temperatures encountered at the Earth's surface. Liquids and gases are not considered minerals. They do not have a characteristic crystal structure. Ice, for example, ceases to exist as a mineral upon melting into liquid water. Inorganic processes. Any material produced through organic activity such as leaves, bones, pit, shell, or soft animal tissue is not considered a mineral. Most fossils, although they were once living, have generally had their living tissues completely replaced by inorganic processes after being buried. Thus, they are considered to be composed of minerals as well. Chemical Composition Most minerals exist as a chemical compounds composed of two or more elements. 
the chemical formula of salt or halite is an ACL. A few minerals consist of only one type of atom, such as graphite, in a form of carbon in this case. Therefore, the chemical formula for graphite is written simply as C. All minerals are defined by their chemical composition. Quartz, for example, has the chemical formula of SiO2, and the gemstone amethyst is a form of quartz that is colored pale to deep purple by the presence of the impurity iron. Orderly Crystalline Structure Minerals are crystalline substance, which means the chemical composition of a mineral is reflected internally in a regular, repeating arrangement of atoms called the crystal structure of the mineral. The crystal structure of halite is in a cubic shape. The cubic shape of salt crystals are very clearly reflects the right angle bonds between the sodium and chlorine atoms in its atomic structure. Through organic and inorganic processes, minerals are formed. A few naturally occurring substances called mineraloids have characteristics chemical composition but are amorphous which means having no definite shape. An opal is an example. So let's go to the composition of minerals. There are approximately 4,000 known minerals uniquely defined by their chemical composition and internal structure. From the previous text, you are now familiar with minerals such as quartz, halite in a form of rock salt, gold, and diamond. Many materials found on the Earth's surface are not minerals. Water is not mineral because it is not a solid though having the same formula with ice. Coal is not a mineral because it is made up of plant remains. It also lacks a particular composition and its atoms are not arranged in an orderly way. Although they are produced by living things, the shells of such marine animals are clams are composed of minerals. Out of all the elements found on the earth, only 8% make up of 98.5% of the crust total mass. More than 90% of the minerals on the earth's crust are compounds containing oxygen and silicon which are the two most abundant elements found on Earth. Most minerals are compounds. Quartz is a compound of silicon and oxygen. The mineral galena is a compound of lead and sulfur. A few minerals, however, contains single elements and are called native elements, which are minerals that exist in their purest forms, some of which include silver, copper, sulfur, and diamond. Often, differing types of minerals such as compounds and native elements are found mixed together. Such mixtures of minerals are called rocks. The precise chemical composition and internal atomic structure that defines each mineral also directly determines 
its outward appearance and physical properties. Thus, in most cases, general appearance and a couple of easily determined physical properties are sufficient to spot the mineral. So let's go now to the last topic of this module, which is the structure of minerals. A mineral is composed of an ordered array of atoms chemically bonded to make a particular crystalline structure. This orderly packing of atoms is reflected in then regular shape objects we call crystals. Rocks are considered to be a combination of one or more minerals. The growth of crystals are affected by the competition for space. So the following are some of the defining features of a crystal. Crystal structure. It is regular, geometric, and smooth faces. Orderly arranged with repelling structures. Each mineral always forms the same crystal shape. Has six basic crystal shapes. And lastly, its crystallographic axes are used to determine structure. That would be our lesson for today. Thank you for listening and see you on the next video lessons.